We are I. Christmas Eve 2022. You know, I sit here and I'm thinking about, man, it's like, what's an appropriate topic to talk about on Christmas Eve? And I'm kind of at this crossroads of, you know, a thought process because I know we have like this, this overarching mentality that we say, you know, during the holidays, <clears throat> let's not get into like any heavy conversation. Let's keep it light. You know, like let's let's not discuss these topics that are ripe with, you know, potential controversy or, you know, differing opinions. And like let's just focus on happiness and joy and reflection and like which is great. But on the flip side of that is like does that just go to show like how we can't have good like meaningful conversations about, you know, topics where, you know, I might have a dissenting opinion than yours and like, that's okay. And we can still have a great time discussing these things. Like, is that where it's led to? Is that where we're at? Because that's really what those statements say. You know, we can't sit around and just have a conversation where we respect and value the other person's opinion against these topics that, that may be heavy. You know, you look at all these things that we can talk about now because it's not, it's not that I think that anything is any different. I think the the thing that we're feeling now, what it seems like is because of all these COVID mandates were forced upon people. And I don't know whether, well, I do know, like there's always been policy change that becomes, you know, an entity that is forced upon people. But I think we accepted those things. And, you know, now because of COVID, we don't want to necessarily accept these policy changes because we know we were lied to about COVID now. Like, and and we know that it was incredibly mishandled. Billions, if not trillions of dollars, you know, in our economies, you know, were, were spent and robbed from because of the mandates and, you know, because of the policies that were put out there. And our countries have just ended up in a terrible position economically. You know, people have ended up in terrible positions personally. You know, inflation is at an all-time high in all these countries. Supply chains have been disrupted. Food prices are through the roof. Gas prices are through the roof. You know, our paychecks are just being robbed by inflation and taxes. And at the same time that taxes are increased and all these things are increased that just make it harder for us to live. And then on top of that, the government comes out and says, we're mandating all electric car sales, you know, by, you know, X date. And it's like, well, fuck, what if I like gas-powered cars? Do you do you think everybody in the world having, or everybody in Canada, put it that way, having electric cars really going to change anything when our leaders are hopping on their private jets and flying around the world at a whim at any time they want? If you were a leader in this category, would you not take your fleet of vehicles right now and say that, you know, the vehicles I get transported in and I get driven around in, the ones that protect me, are going to be electric, but they don't. Do you think that if you're going to enter this gun legislation saying that hunters can't even own rifles they use to be able to hunt and what they've used to hunt for decades and decades and decades, but yet you need weapons to protect you, leaders of this country in these countries, they need weapons to protect them that have been banned for most of Canadians for decades and decades and decades. Not even talking about the ones that are just used to be able to provide food for families. Because that's what you're talking about is taking away the means to be able to provide food for families, lessening the impact on supply chains because these hunters use these to be able to hunt and gather food for themselves and their loved ones. 
Never mind being told how you can work, when you can work, the a length of time you can work for, whether your industry is relevant or not. You know, because of COVID mandates, like, I think that this is where people are just tired, tired of being told what they can and can't do, tired of being told you have to do this for this reason. Even if you don't like it, you have to do it. I think that we've just been told things we don't want to hear for so long and for in so many different areas. And the hypocrisy now is just getting so rich when you have these MPs and MLAs and cabinet ministers and prime ministers, you know, voting themselves raises during a time when inflation is at an all time high, when these are the people responsible for making inflation as high as spending is at an all time high. Government spending is at an all time high. And this is what's causing inflation. The Bank of Canada has come out and said because of the amount of money that the government wants to spend and print that this is the reason why Canadians themselves are struggling to provide income for themselves. And I want to be able to have conversations like this because these are just real. Like when do we have to evade irreality, evade reality because of the time of year that it is? Like it doesn't make any sense. Because I want to have a conversation where you just say, like, this is the reality. It's the reality we live in because we refuse to have these conversations any other time of the year. It's resulted in a major reason why we're in the position that we're in today. We need to look at these topics that they're just, they're, they're, they're relevant to us. They're not, we're not talking about tabloid news because this is the, the flip side of the other conversation I was thinking about having this morning on this podcast was, you know, I don't understand why fake news is such a big thing right now. Well, we've always had fake news, but it was just the National Enquirer that you might pick up when you're standing in a grocery store line, you know, that had some crazy headline like aliens are living in the White House. But think how popular that tabloid was and how many people bought it, knowing it was fake news because it was just... You almost kind of wanted it to be true, which is a whole another rabbit hole on itself. I guess because maybe the fact that I haven't really sat down and got some of these things out of my mind the last like week or so, because that time of year's just been busy, that now they're starting to circulate inside my mind. And leaving 2022, getting to the end of the year of 2022, thinking like, are we as Canadians... Are we as these global citizens going to going to fix things at our own individual level? Because it has a trickle up effect over the course of time. Because this is how we've gotten this position. We didn't get in this position just all of a sudden one day things change. We've been slowly going down this path for decades. So it's just like what I tell people if they're like, hey, Blake, how do I lose 20 pounds? It's like, well, if it took you 10 years to gain that 20 pounds, would you give yourself 10 years to be able to take it off? No, you want it off right now. But if we're going to make any significant changes in Canada, especially politically, if it took us 20 years to get here, we have to think that it's going to take 20 years to unwind this. But we have to do what got us here is stay the same consistent messaging day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, until we get back to that place that all of our founders who helped shape and mold this country, what their thought was. And when they said, you know, we should be able to have free speech, we should be able to have dissenting opinion, we should be able to have debates. We This is what makes up a democracy in a free country, is not censoring people's voices, allowing people to be able to debate about everything and talk about everything, but still be able to break bread at the end of the day, because that is the Canadian way. So I guess this is maybe exactly the point that I'm trying to make through all this is that do we just need to be able to get back to the Canadian way? Leave me alone. Let me do my own thing. 
I will be polite to you. You will be polite to me. We will go on our merry way. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your opinions. I know that this has been scattered. It's been rent. It's been all over the place. But again, it's just the byproduct of having too many different subjects floating around in my mind and thinking about what I want and what you want and what we should all want to be working towards to be able to start changing the narrative in 2023 because there's opportunity too because there's so many people who are starting to stand up and say, what we have been doing these last couple years especially is just not right, it's not healthy, and it's not sending us down a righteous path.